Shabbat Shalom, Israel. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to the feast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us greet one another. Hallelujah. Glorious feast of Yah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
take a picture before we start service. Hallelujah. 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 So six foot and up. Let's go. Let's come on up. Let's take a picture. Six foot and up. Let's go. Come on. You six foot or taller. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Five nine and up. Five nine. Come on, come on. Five nine. Five nine. Five nine and up. Let's go. Hallelujah. 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 Five nine. We got all five nine and up. Five seven, five seven, let's go. Five seven and up, let's go. Five foot seven and up, let's go. A nice sweaty picture, hallelujah. Yeah, like it. Lord to the king, yeah. praise y'all. Yeah. Five foot four, five foot four, let's go. That's the rest of y'all almost, huh? Midget, midget crew, let's go. Midget crew, let's go. Come on. <laughs> we got a tiny people crew. Come on, get tight. Come on, Saints, get tight, get tight. Get tight in there. Come on across the front. Shorter folk across the front. Come on. Oh, they on a the tiny crew. I said 5'4". I don't know what they're doing up there. All right, everybody else, come on up. Everybody else. Tiny crew, come on up. My bad. My bad. My bad. Tiny crew. Tiny crew. Come on. Come on, tiny crew. We're all loved in Israel. Hallelujah. <laughs> tiny crew. Tiny crew. Bring your wave offering. Come on with it. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. What well, we want, Mom, at in the middle? Hold up. Oh, no. Hold, 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 hold. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Okay, Ma. Uh, Where we normally put mine? Uh, who? Over here on the side? Okay. Slide her right in the middle. Y'all children, y'all slide. Hey, hey, young man. Y'all slide over, slide over. Come on over, slide over. There we go. Two gotta go. You need this one too. This one here. All this gotta go. Children, y'all on the end, come, come on here. Come on, young man, come on. Y'all come, come on all in, get in tight here, children. Slide over, sweetie. Go ahead, slide over. Move your feet. Slide over. Nope, stay there, though. Come on. Have a seat. There we go. Come on, man. You come on up. Sit right there. Actually, you stay, because you're short. You come up. You sit right there. Come on up. Keep everybody in line. There we go. Yeah. 
See him now. What you doing, man? Come on. What are you doing? I told the bear I said so. That means I'm I was thinking I'm waiting for them to sit down. That's going to hurt. Never going to do it. And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who has brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim and out of the house of slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my face. You do not make for yourself a carved image, and your language is that which is in the heavens above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them or serve them. For I am Yahweh, your Elohim, and I'm a jealous El, visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children, to the third and fourth of those who hate me, but showing loving commitment to thousands of those who love me and guard my commands. You do not bring the name of Yahweh, your Elohim, to not. For Yahweh did not leave unpunished, who brings the name to not. Remember the Shabbat, set it apart. Six days you labor, you do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath, Yahweh Yohim. In it, you not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male slave, nor your female slave, nor your cattle, nor your stranger within your gates. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. And the rest of the seventh day, therefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart. Respect your father and your mother, so that your days are prolonged upon the soil which Yahweh your Elohim has given you. You do not murder, you do not commit adultery, you do not steal, you do not bear false witness against your neighbor, you do not covet your neighbor's house, you do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male slave, nor his female slave, nor his ox, nor his donkey, whatsoever belongs to your neighbors. All right, hallelujah. Abba Yah, most magnificent and wonderful counselor that you are. 
We come to you on your commanded holy feast days, which we delight in being here before you. Thank you for inviting us, causing us to be mindful in our exile. We need your ears, your ears, to be able to hear, to give us clarity. Help us with a more intimate relationship with you, Father. Fill us with your Ruach here today, your truth, your word. In magnificent name of Yahshua, we'll glorify your holy name. Thank you for the blood that never loses its power. We bless you for all things. In magnificent name of Yahshua, hallelujah. You may be seated. All right, everybody all right? That's good. Hey, I need undivided attention today, okay? Now, we're here during a major feast day. Y'all hear me? And it's more, you know, it's more blessed to hear. You know, you need to hear. You can uh, bring this down just a little bit, Elder Doug. Hallelujah. Can y'all hear me back there? If y'all can hear me, nod your head, hold a hand, or just don't sit and look at me. Lord to the king. All right. Lord to the king. I'm glad y'all here. Hallelujah. Everybody all right? Y'all ain't got that bug, do you? Nope. Mm -hmm. Daniel and Kabir does. They're guarding the door. Look at them back here. And Doc does too. Where Doc at? He's still back here. Look. Watch the six, Doc. All right. I need, really, uh, some of you have never experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Can we all agree that humanistic reason has never gotten us anywhere? And that we have been filled to the zenith with ideologies, theologies, and doctrines of men? So don't you think it's about time that we really pay attention to the word? You know, we did that video the other day speaking about the law of the stranger or love thy stranger, right? And immediately somebody comes on there and, and gives um, Hebrew 16, 16 said that it was an Israelite. It, what they said, it was bloodline Israelite that was strangers. Now, how did you have a bloodline Israelite that was a stranger in the time of the Exodus? But they believe this stuff, man. So I actually spent about 15 minutes this morning making an extremely long post trying to help these people out for the ones that need help. You know what I mean? Uh, if not, it's, at least it's there for the people who, who can actually read and want to hear it. But don't cumbersome yourself so much about these people. If you got ears, you'll hear. If you don't, none of my business. That means y'all is not dealing with you. Hallelujah. I'm just glad I got them. And you need them this morning. Y'all hear me? Y'all really need them this morning, okay? To be able to hear the word of the Most High. Y'all ready to get started? Yes, How many of y'all are getting baptized today? Well, a few of them. Okay, good. We'll be doing some baptisms then. All right. Psalms 103, verse 7. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Now, this word is often taught by those who have not received his Ruach, or his Holy Spirit. We have thousands of people all across this land that teaches this word, but has never, ever been baptized with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, people are, there's, a, again, thousands of people that will explain to you a thousand different ways why you don't need it the way that the Bible says. But you have to come outside of yourself and actually believe what the word says if you're going to have this experience, and then you'll understand because remember, the gifts work by love. And the reason why the people don't have gifts, because they don't have love. <laughs> Does that make sense? So you're going to hear and see a difference. Now today, from the pastor who has been filled with the Holy Spirit, and I've been filled with the Holy Spirit for a long time. Now let's see what the scripture says. We'll start with Tehelium 40, verse 7. It says, then said, see. Then I said, see. I have come in the scroll of the book meaning the volume of the book, for it is prescribed for me, meaning it is written of me. The volume of the book means the wholeness and the fullness of the book. 
You see, what people don't comprehend and understand is that the feast days tell the story, our whole entire story. From all the way from Bereshit all the way to Huzum, from Genesis to Revelation. It tells the whole entire story. And it's all summed up in the Messiah. So if you don't understand his feast days, you don't know y'all's timing. And right now, the feast, even to this point right here, has already been fulfilled. That's why we're enjoying the benefits of it right now. But what hasn't been fulfilled are the fall feast. That's the day of vengeance. And the day of judgment. But to us, it's a day of our full redemption. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Of being transformed in the moment of a twinkle of an eye at the last trump. Hallelujah. For the trump of Yah shall sound. And those that are dead are going to hear his voice, and then we which are alive and remain will be caught up. And so shall we forever be with the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. And that's what we're waiting on. But we have to understand the Moedims, the set apart and appointed times to feast, and how they relate to us. And then after today's teaching, you're going to wonder why either you've set up under people who taught contrary to this, or you've listened to people who have taught contrary to this, and then if you were don't let pride get in your way to keep you from receiving this. Because it takes humility. Remember, Yah resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. Is that right? He repeats the same thing over in Hebrews 10 and 7. He says, Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book, for it's written of me to do thy will, O Yah. Now, the Ruach, there used to be a time that the Ruach was upon the people. And y'all remember throughout the book, y'all in the old, we'll call it the Old Testament for understanding. He didn't have many friends. He had Abraham as a friend. He had Moses as a friend. A few called people. Now he, he didn't have too many of them. But see, now when Christ came, he said over in Johanna 15, he says, he says, I no longer call you what? Servants. But I call you Friends. You follow me? You hear that? Friends. Again, a friend is a very close companion. Think about this for a second. A friend is someone that actually will stick closer to you than a brother. I mean, David and Jonathan were friends. And they loved each other to the death. They did. He even protected his friend away from his father that was going off. Y'all get it? So it's a very close, intimate relationship. It used to be a time that the Ruach was upon people at different times. That's how Samson was able to do all those mighty works. David, the same thing. But now that same Ruach is inside of us. It can be inside of us. The reason why... That, that we don't feel it to the strength that it should be exhibited is because throughout all these captivities, we've been robbed. And I keep saying, I said it once, I've said it a thousand times, the reason why we've been robbed is because the real true Israelite is not teaching this. When you get taught by Gentiles, you're going to receive the Gentile ways. They're going to give you their doctrine because there's a different spirit on them than is on us as the Israelites. Now, this is available to anyone who will embrace his laws, his statutes, his commandments, his covenant. Are you following me? And you'll see, you'll see the difference. Oh, you see the difference, you'll feel the difference, you'll know the difference. You follow me? Because I'm sure we're all tired of being deceived. Lord to the king. I said to Brother Kabir this morning, we were sitting there talking in the living room. I said, you know, the one thing about this particular ministry right here that, that you can tell is different than everybody else? When you hear this word, it shocks you so much that you actually start reading your Bible for the first time. Not only do you start reading, you actually start studying it. Now, you didn't do that when you was involved with all these other philosophies and religions and stuff. You just believe whatever they say. They get up in front of you, dearly beloved, how are y'all doing here today? They read one scripture and tell you a story for 45 minutes. And you sit there and endure that mess. Leave Come in empty, leave empty. Come in a mess, leave a mess. 
No change, nothing. And it's so foreign to us, we go, wow. Then we start reading the book, not knowing that that's the Ruach that's leading you to do that. See, the one thing that the real true Ruach would do is he will lead you and he will guide you into all truth. And this is a journey. You follow me? To where you're being led in God. We're farther along now than we were five years ago. We're going to be farther along in this than, what we, I'm, than we are today. He has no ending. But you have to be hungry. The blessed ones that are the ones that are hunger and thirst after what? Do you want to be righteous? Are you following me? And if you want to be righteous, he said, then you will be filled. Them are the blessed ones. Are you following me? Them are the blessed ones. Not filled to do your will, but filled to do his will. Seek ye first the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Now, over in Shemot 5.1, it says, Then afterwards Moshe and Aaron went in and said to Pharaoh, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Let my people go so that they may keep a festival to me in the wilderness. That was the message. Let them go. Not only let them go, but they need to come and worship me. They need to come before me. They need to appear before me. In the wilderness. Over in 10 9 it says, And Moses said, We will go with our young and our old because Pharaoh wanted to say, No, I'm going to let you, I'll release this and I'll release that, but no, 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 no. We're going to go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters and our flocks and with our herds, and we will go. For we must hold a feast unto Yahweh. You see, most people miss this part of the message right here. It was more than just being a release from the house of bondage. Or being free from the house of bondage. There was something else subsequent to this. Huh? He wanted you to get free so you could come out and meet him. You understand that? This festival was the Feast of Weeks called Pentecost. It was in the third month that Israel received the commandments on Mount Sinai. Third month. And when he wrote them commandments, he wrote them with the finger... And everybody saw the mountain quaking. Everybody saw the thunderings and the darkness. And, and, and they all heard his voice. All of Israel did. Over in Acts, it says this is he. That was the assembly in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles given, uh, oracles to given unto us. Now, We've got to know his ways because if you don't know his ways, you're going to miss him, okay? Every single one of Yahweh's feast days, all, all about him. Now, the word does not say you shall receive knowledge when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And there's a lot of people out there teaching, man, you get the Holy Spirit when you, when you read his word and receive it. That ain't what it says. That's not what it says. So do you got the Holy Spirit because you went to school? <laughs> Does that make sense? It don't say that. First Corinthians fifteen forty six says, "How be of that not was not which is spiritual, but that which is natural." In other words, that's the first principle thing that comes first. Then afterward, that which is spiritual. Exodus seventeen six seventy seven six. Then thou shalt say unto him, The Yahweh Elohim of the Hebrews have sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, that we may. Serve that they may serve me in the what? Wilderness. See, that's the key point right there. We always talk about uh, the exile or getting free from Egypt and stuff, but we never put emphasis on the reason for it. And behold, there unto was not here. So the first month, the month of Abib, 15 days, because remember the first feast starts on the 15th day of the first month. Are you following me? And of course, let's just say you're giving. And we know it's 29.9 anyway. Just go read the newsletter, but 30 days, round it up, okay? So we got 15, then we got 30, and then we got the third month, which was four days, which would give us seven weeks or 49 days. Then the next day after that would be the first day or the 50th or what is commonly called in the Greek Pente, or what we call Pentecost. It was the next day that Yahweh wrote the commandments and gave uh, them to children of Israel 50, the next day, 50 complete days from the feast. 
that after Messiah resurrected at the close of his three days and three nights, he was seen of his disciples 40 days. So after Christ had resurrected from the dead, believe it or not, he was all over, walking around all in that region, popping in and popping out, seen 40 days. And the book says by many infallible proofs, speaking and preaching and teaching of things concerning the kingdom of God. So what should we be ministering today? The kingdom of Yah. Y'all hear that? The kingdom of Yah. Not who's your daddy. Or what church you belong to. They ain't number one assembly. I don't know what all the rest of this crap is that's going on. <laughs> Are you following? I don't get it. Pertain to the kingdom of Yah. Then he went back to heaven. Then over in the book of Acts 1.3 it says, To whom he showed himself alive after many infallible proofs, being seen of them. How many days? Four. This is just showing you the proof text. And speaking of things uh, pertaining to the kingdom of Yah. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. My question is, is why isn't this message preached today? Why isn't it taught today? Because it ties right on in to the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Pentecost. Because after that 40 days, Christ told them that you um, go to Jerusalem and you wait. Is that right? Meaning you're going to tarry. Is that right? You're going to be tarrying. So 40 days post-resurrection, 10 days of tarrying with the disciples equal what? 50. So that's when you get to the book of Acts when it says in the day of Pentecost was fully come. It was all one accord in one place. So in other words, we see that Yah is consistent with his calendar. You follow me? He just wasn't doing things. He's very consistent with his calendar. Now, the prophet Jeremiah told us about the, the new covenant and the way it was going to be. He said, Behold, the days come, say of Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Now, remember, Hebrews tell us that there wasn't nothing wrong with the covenant. Christians try to tell you something wrong with the covenant. There wasn't nothing wrong with the covenant. The book of Hebrews says for finding fault with them. Yeah. Well, nothing wrong with the covenant. There's something wrong with us. You get it? Although they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh, but this shall be the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my what? In their what? Now we got a whole brand new religion that's done popped up on the scene in the last 2,000 years that tells you you don't need this law, you don't need to obey the law, it's done away with. But then Jeremiah prophesied and said that he's going to actually put it in your inward parts. You know what I mean? So you don't have to look down at your teeth seats and say, I need to remember this law. Uh-oh. You think I'm beating them up now? You think I'm beating them up now? Because isn't that what the teeth seats were for? To remind us to do what? And how did they do? We despised them, didn't we? So, oh, so much so to the point that y'all abhorred his heritage, abhorred his people. Matter of fact, he despised us so much, he says, I'm so much finished with you, I'm going to scatter you throughout all the nations so you can be just like the heathens. And we have actually outdone the heathens. It's a sad thing. So now he's going to take and put these laws in the inward parts and write them in their what? hearts. Now, think about this. When you receive the Ruach, that's all you want to do is want to keep his law and be obedient. You don't have to have nobody looking at you to see if you're keeping the commandments or not. You're already keeping them because you fear the one that's in you. Hallelujah. And I will be their Yah and they shall be my people and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man, his brother, saying, Know y'all, for they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, saith y'all, for I will forgive their what? Iniquities. Iniquities, and I will remember their sin no more. You know what I mean? You think about that, man. You can look at you and tell you a rascal. Wouldn't it be nice, man, when you, you got a mind there thinking about everything you done done, and then you, you get up there and say, Oh, that's my son. Get on in. Hallelujah. <laughs> <Isn't that something? laughs> 
And here you are remembering everything you ever done. He goes, I don't know what you're talking about. Isn't that beautiful? Huh? Oh boy, isn't that something? Now, that's a real promise. We remember, but he said, I don't. You can be clean. Isn't that beautiful? Really, truly. Human wisdom and understanding is not going to get you filled with, this, with his spirit. He did not say you shall receive knowledge when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Nor did he say you will receive wisdom when the Ruach has come upon you. He did say you shall receive what? Power. Ah. Now that's real. You can't study this up. You can't manufacture this. <laughs> Shemaim is going to give this to you. Huh? And he only gives the Ruach to them that obey him. <laughs> you get it? That means there's some, something from heaven has got to come and visit you. You can't go turn the doorknob and re remember three scriptures and get it. You follow me? You ain't going to do that. He's going to have to personally come and visit you. But if you're going to get a personal visitation, you're going to have to get out of your lawful, prideful, high-minded high self. And you know what's always amazed me about people is, is this. Think about this for a second. Here we are, got one chance at this life right here to actually have his spirit and walk with it the rest of the days of our life. And because we got so much dignity... And so much pride. We're too prideful to get up and cry and sob and, and, and scream and shout and hallelujah and worship and praise because we're afraid that some human who is in the same old fallen state and nature that you were right. don't care about what somebody thinks. You out of your mind. Ain't that true? These pieces of dirt walking around. Huh? As soon as the breath go out of your body, going to be decomposing. That's prideful. Is it not? But you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come up on you. Now, a lot of people claiming they got the Ruach, but they ain't got no power. Somebody lying. Now, why isn't this preached? Why isn't this taught? If Yahshua say you're going to receive power, then we should be asking, how do we get the power? Where is that power? And what is that power? I mean, I've been having it a long time. Happy for it, too. Mind you, as vile and vulgar and nasty and obnoxious and overbearing that they say that I am. I want to walk up my half and grieved him. Uh-oh. But some of you with them clean mouths and filthy lives, you live in grief for him every day. Uh-oh. Think about that. Must be something different here. When if the Holy Spirit's come up on you, it'll be what? Witnesses unto me, both in Samaria, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria to the uttermost parts of the earth. Now listen to what Paul said to the assembly at Corinth. And I, brother, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of the wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of Yah. For I am determined not to know anything among you except Yahshua, the Messiah, and him what? The whole thrust of the message is about him and his crucifixion, him and his resurrection. Y'all hear me? And we hear everything preached today that doesn't even tie into this. That's the power of the message. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Y'all go ahead and shut that door. That's cooling off now. And my speech. And my speech. And my preaching was not with the enticing 
words of man's wisdom. In other words, I wasn't this great orator like Socrates or Philo. What was that? What's the name? Phileo? Phileo? Not Phileo, man. man. Y'all just dumb as I am. At least I know y'all been with Jesus. <laughs> but in the demonstration, demonstration, but in the demonstration, but in the demonstration, but in the demonstration of the Spirit. Now, you got to ask yourself a question. You, you're seeing this clearly for yourself. How many people you see demonstrating this? You know, it's time for the rubber to meet the road. How many people demonstrate? Well, there's a lot of religious people in the world. But how many people is actually demonstrating this? But in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Sound like a bunch of empty vessels running around, don't it? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the what? Power of Yah. Now think about this for a second. That your faith should be in the power of Yah. He just said it. That your faith not be in the wisdom of men, but in the what? Power of Yah. That your faith should be in the power of Yah. Power of Yah. Power of Yah. He said it. Not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of Yah. In the what? You got to believe, believe that. Paul's preaching was not in his great learning or in his persuasive words of human wisdom. It was all summed up in a simple message of Jesus and him crucified. Huh? John, look what John said. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. And John didn't do one miracle. But he was powerful with a witness and a testimony, though, wasn't he? He didn't do one miracle. Think about that. And yet, among men, there's no greater prophet that has ever been born. You know why? Because he revealed the king. If we was using our selective deduction, we'll say Elijah was the greatest prophet. Huh? Oh, yeah, we would have. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the what? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit and with what? Fire. Now, wait a minute. What do you mean baptized with the Holy Spirit? Don't we, ain't water baptism sufficient? That ain't what John taught because he came in baptizing. But he said there was somebody coming after me who's greater than me. He, when he come, he got something else for you. He's going to give you this Ruach, this Holy Spirit, and it's going to be with fire. He also said over here in John 7, 37, he says, In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him do what? Come unto me and do what? Drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture have said. As the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. See, it's something you should receive. If somebody give you a gift, isn't that, don't you kind of humble when you receive it? You know, somebody give you a gift. Here, give me this, man. You don't do this, do you? Oh, thank you. <laughs> huh? You just don't snatch it from him and take off, do you? He said he should receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet what? Because that Yahshua was not yet what? He had not yet been risen. At this time right here, he ain't even passed on yet. Here he is prophesying to this. John 20, 22, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the what? Holy they didn't receive it at that time just because he breathed on them. Did y'all hear me? Yes, they didn't receive it at that time. You follow me? He's getting them prepared to receive the Holy Spirit. It's easy getting prepared to receive the Holy Spirit. First of all, you have to humble your heart. 
You ever seen people sitting down on the outside but standing up on the inside? Yeah. Acts 1 and 8. But you shall receive what? Power. Power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witness both unto me in Jerusalem, Judea. I keep doing it. Samaria and other part, most parts of the earth. Now, the infilling. Acts 2, 1. And when the day of was fully come. Now, if we're not supposed to keep the feast days, why are they over here in the, book, in, in the New Testament? I mean, why even mention the day of Pentecost? Does that make any sense? And the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord and in what? How many places? How many places? One place. And then suddenly there came a sound from Shemaim as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were what? Setting. And there appeared unto them what? Cloven tongues like as of fire and is set upon each of them. Now, according to Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Isn't that right? I am Yahweh, I Elohim, and I change not. Is that right? So, if it appeared unto them back then, can it appear unto us today? And they were all filled with the what? And begin to speak with? Somebody say, well, you know, they're not speaking other tongue. That tongue is a bunch of gibberish. Ain't no more gibberish than what you're talking right now. You ever seen a baby talk? You ever seen a baby trying to talk? Talk to you and stuff? Huh? They know what they're saying, but you don't. You know how many languages there are in the world? Bro, Giddy, ain't you trained Africans? Man, them, them brothers got some dialects over there, don't they? That sounds like tongues of you, don't it? There's hundreds of languages on this earth. You don't never know which one you're going to be speaking. But I know one thing, when you receive the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're going to start off like a baby. That's why the scriptures say you must be born again. That'd be a mess, man, if your armor comes out, man, and, and he, he is four months old. Next morning, he wake up, he started carrying on a conversation with you. Hey, Pops, what's up? Huh? What? Yeah, bro, bro, there's got to be a spirit in that. You know. <laughs> Think about that for a second. You got all these hundreds of languages on the earth, and you're going to tell me you're an expert on every one of them, but yet there are testimonies after testimonies after testimony, and you, many of you won't know because you ain't never been outside of America. You could be used of the Holy Spirit to sit there and minister to someone in another language while you're speaking in the heavenly language. And they could tell you perfectly what you're saying, but your understanding is unfruitful. See, humanistic reasoning. We're trying to equate all the, nat all the power of y'all to, uh, to bring it down to the little natural understanding of us base-minded humans in order to make sense. His ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And not only that, he takes the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Isn't that something? He turn around and make things look so foolish just so that you can put all your humanistic reasoning into it. And then miss him. And they begin to speak with other tongues as the spirit. Somebody say, I heard somebody the other day say, uh, I know who gave you that utterance. Kundalini gave you that utterance. I said, good, you just sealed your faith. Because anytime you attribute the work of the Ruach, the Holy Spirit, to a demon, you have blasphemed the Holy Spirit. And you don't have no chance of forgiveness or redemption in this life, nor in the world to come. I actually had a preacher, Roberts. He used to be an, a Pentecostal preacher. Now he denies the indwelling and filling the Holy Spirit. Huh? He blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Right in front of my face. I say, well, you, now you know where you're going. Because he got so full of humanistic reasoning and stuff and got so irritated and so mad that he couldn't combat the wisdom that I was coming with. Couldn't deny the power of me casting out this devil on the, this, this woman right here in a matter of a second. He got so pissed off and stuff that he had his, yeah, his pride 
Cause him to be destroyed. His own lip. Now he's living, right? But, but he's being destroyed while he yet lives. Did not Yahshua call them scribes and Pharisees? You generation of vipers. John 8, you up your father the devil. We still got people like that today. The majority of people that are that are claimed to be in some form of faith or religion are nothing but a, a, a brood of vipers. Really? Hardly any of them have ever been filled with his Holy Spirit. See, again, heaven, Shemaim, Yah, it's got to come from the from the heaven. As the Spirit gave them utterance. As the Spirit. This is not you giving us the Spirit. You may start off with you, but it ain't going to end that way. It's only amazing because when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, nobody told me about no speaking in no tongues. Now what you going to say about that? I didn't know one scripture about it. Nothing. All I did was just get up and repent and cry my heart out. That's all I did. And then I started praising him and kept on praising him and kept on praising him and going in. And all of a sudden something started changing. I go, oh boy, what is this? Mind you, not knowing one scripture verse. Didn't know no, I knew John 3.16. Now, now that one I had down pat. So I had to, I had to take them words back. I did know John 3.16. That's all I knew about the Holy Spirit. So what are you going to do? And what are you going to tell someone that didn't know anything about it and all of a sudden they received it? Hmm? Men will confuse you and it's nonsensical for someone who has never received the Ruach to presume to teach you about him. Is it not? You got people trying to tell you that you don't need no Holy Spirit like that, man. And, and you ain't never received it. At least, if, come on, at least have some experience about something. I remember when uh, Kabir and them first came here, um, and we were sitting at the table. Now, mind you, him and Daniel both, man, played in the NFL, right? Years. And we had a couple of brothers trying to tell them about their position. I said, are you out of your damn mind? Shut the hell up. You go to the range, but you know how to shoot a gun. And this man's a warrior over here and been to wars and literally put people to sleep. And only people you put to sleep is on call of duty. <laughs> See, <laughs> y'all ain't never seen no stuff like that before. Man, it's, it's off the chain. I don't know what this is. But anyway, now how can somebody who ain't never experienced it tell you about it? Why do you think people don't preach and teach on it? You can't preach and teach on something you ain't got. You can't give what you don't have. Huh? People were wondering, what was the meaning of this? And they were all amazed. And they were all in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others, mocking, said these men are full of what? You know what happened when you think you're sober and you're drunk? <laughs> or you call yourself, we get spiritual now, we just marry. <laughs> we just marry. <laughs> Brother, it's time you go home, man. <laughs> Look what Peter said. Are we going to believe the testimony? And Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be it known unto you and hearken to these words. Look and hearken to my words. For these are not drunk, ye suppose sin is but the what? Third hour of the day, we assume it's nine o'clock, because they will start the time at six, okay? If you bent at nine o'clock in the morning, you got problems. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Wait a minute. He's going to equate what's going on on the day of Pentecost right there with what the prophet Joel has said. 
Prophet Joel came thousands of years before that. He's going to equate with what's happening right here at this time with what the prophet Joel had said. The prophecy says, For well, you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am Yahweh your Elohim and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days I will pour out my spirit. Now if he's talking about sons and daughters, he also include servants and I mean they're going to get it too. Huh? See these people are all man. My, my advice to y'all is y'all cut off all these false leaders and teachers that are misguiding you. Now do what you want. <laughs> That's my advice. And in those days I will pour out my spirit. This is a prophecy of what actually Peter was equating to what was happening in his day. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And you can read that in Matthew 24 as well. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of y'all shall be what? Delivered. For in Mount Zion in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as Yahweh have said and in the remnant of Yahweh shall call. He goes back. He had already repeated what the prophecy had said. The people listened to him, heard what he had to say and they had a question. What shall we do? And Peter answered like this. Repent. And do what? You have to confess first. And then you have to be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the what? And he says when you meet that condition, when you do it, and you shall receive. See, most of you have repented and been baptized, but you, you, you stopped. Most of you have repented and been baptized, but you stopped. Some of you don't repent and been baptized, and you've been in remission for 10 years. Some of you are in remission 20 years. Ain't he winning a step farther? Time to close the gap then, right? You shall receive the gift of the what? Then you got your philosophers. Well, I don't have that gift because you ain't none of his. This is not one of those what you call nine gifts of the spirit over there. This is something that every born again believer should receive. That's the reason why I said should receive because it's leaving it up to you. Uh oh. Y'all hearing that? So Peter said, Acts 10 44. Remember Cornelius? Huh? Corn the Italian Cornelius. Of the Italian band Cornelius. Do you remember him? You remember Cornelius of the Italian band, right? The Roman centurion. Okay. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came. The days of the circumcision are the ones who came to Joppa with Peter. There was three of them. Because that on the Gentiles, and this is not Hellenists, this is not Greek speaking Jews scattered in foreign lands. How'd I do? How'd I do, Colin? Pretty good. Well, you graduated? Yes, sir. Okay. So that means you higher learn? <laughs> yes, sir. <Okay. laughs> that because that on the Gentiles was also poured the gift of the what? Now wait a minute, if heaven is going to give Gentiles, if Yah is going to give the Gentiles, Yahshua is giving the Gentiles the Holy Spirit, who are you to say that they can't have it? You got people out here that don't got it, tell you Yah can't give it to the Gentiles, but yet the Gentiles received it right here. And people today preaching and handling his word on corners and everything else, and they ain't even got it. And they prevent you from getting it. 
<laughs> For they heard them speak with what? So even the Gentiles spoke with tongues. And magnified Yah. The key word. And magnified Yah. Then answer Peter. He goes on to the baptism, right? Paul. Paul's over here passing through the upper coast of Ephesus and he found certain disciples. And he asked them two things. Two things that he asked them. He says, number one, how were you baptized? And they said, oh man, we got it covered. We were baptized with John. You know John. John the Immerser. Yeah, man, he taught us, man. We were baptized with John. Um, and um, John, man, whew, he baptized with baptism of repentance. He told us about repentance. That they that believe on him what should come after him, talking about on Christ Jesus, right? And then he said, well, tell me, how were you, did you, have you ever received the Holy Spirit? Mind you, these disciples had to be carrying themselves a certain way for Paul to be able to recognize and look out and go. Them look like some disciples right there, man. Let me go rap to them for a second. Let's go back here and let me chop it up for a second with them. Today, people will cuss you out. You, you even quote this passage of the scripture. How are you baptized and have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? They have said, I am not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Spirit. Paul goes on to say, what? You mean tell me, John, the one who told you <laughs> that there's somebody coming after him who's mighty than he is, who latch up his shoes is not worthy and loose. He told you when he's coming, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and we're fine. You ain't never heard no Holy Spirit? You must have been using that selective hearing. You must have went to sleep during that time when he was talking in that one. That's what that was, wasn't it? You couldn't have been at the baptism when Yahshua was there because you would have remembered that. And now you want to claim association with John. Uh-oh. It all ended, mind you, he was in Ephesus. When this took place. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, for they spake with? No. Somebody says another language. What is the name of that language program? You ain't gonna Rosetta Stone this. <laughs> and besides, if, it, if we had to receive the Holy Spirit by getting it through Rosetta Stone or learning another language, dumb as we are today and can't retain nothing, we all going to hell. Because we can't, we, can't, we can't remember two words from any language the next day or the next minute I've just talked to us. So you can count me out. I can speak four languages. Kamio Tatayo. What does that mean? What Tomoko at? What does that mean? What does that mean, Tomoko? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because everybody ain't going to hear it. Come here, Tomoko. I'm speaking Japanese. You didn't know I was that intelligent, did you? What did I just say, Tomoko? Praise God. Hallelujah. So you're going to tell me I'm not praising y'all when I say Kamiyo Tatayo? I was down there doing a the running, man, during Tabernacles, talking about Kamiyo Tatayo. And everybody was looking at me loud. I was like, man, they don't even know what I'm saying. So I kept saying it, Kamiyo Tatayo. No, no. I never mind. Y'all don't remember? <laughs> When you go back and look at it, don't go back laughing at me. Just look at the video. <laughs> what does dodo mean? Domo? Dodo. Dodo. Yeah. Please. Dodo. 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 It's my dialect. Dodo. Man, she gonna try to take me on the chin, man. I try to pronounce a word, man. What you say? Dodo. 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 Damn it. Please. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. I can lay it on y'all. Kamichiwa? Huh? So you mean to tell me all this stuff that I'm talking, I still am not praising y'all? Says who? That are natural languages. When you go read 1 Corinthians 14, it tells you, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man. He speaketh unto Yah. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Now what you gonna do? Uh-oh. 
So, thus far, we're seeing a lot of people filled with the Holy Spirit, and we're seeing it denied today. I will say it again. You will never hear anyone speak on this subject right here if they're not filled. I've had people tell me, oh, I'm kind of uncomfortable with that. I say, you better get out of that comfort zone then, damn it. This ain't about your flesh feeling comfortable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, so they spake with tongues and they prophesied. Laid hands on them to receive. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the what? Miracles. Miracles. The signs that were done. I remember seeing a, a video one day where this woman right there was mocking somebody in IUIC. This, this demonic woman. And I said, boy, if I was there, I said, that was spirit wouldn't be doing it to me because I have it flopping around like a fish out of, out of water. And they go, you gonna bow down. You gonna bow down. That's all the power they got. You gonna bow down. You gonna bow down. Boy, I let that demonic witch come up in front of me like that. Yeah, you will see a battle. I ain't got a lay hand on them either. Look at them looking. It's amazing, boy. I'm like, look at that. And I said, that's, that's y'all look, look. And they want everybody to believe that mess. Now, when the apostles which were in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of y'all, they sent unto them what? Peter and John. Well, in this case, because Peter and John was equipped with something. Who, when they would come down, prayed for them, they might receive the what? Now, wait a minute. They received the word. All y'all received the word. But you mean to tell me they went on a little bit farther? They went on a little bit farther. They went on a little bit farther to receive what Joel had already talked about. They went on a little bit farther to receive what Isaiah had already talked about. For with stammering lips and another tongue will I speak to this people. They went on a little bit farther to speak what Jeremiah had already promised them. According to what this was going to be when Yahshua had come. Went on a little bit farther. They didn't stop like everybody else did. They understood a message so perfect that what Yahshua had said when he told them to receive the Holy Spirit and he breathed on them to receive the Holy Spirit that after his death, burial, and resurrection they turned around and they preached the what? Gospel of the kingdom. But you had to be equipped. Somebody said, well what about the 70 and the 12 that he went out and they re rejoiced and they returned because the devils were subject to them to this name. That's because Yahshua was there with them. He was there with them. But remember, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will come again. Did you see that? And they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. I had one brother. He prayed 14 times before he got the Holy Spirit. And he'd go, oh, I'll be back. I said, good. Never discourage. He's like, man, I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> he kept coming back too and he got it. For as he was, for as yet he was falling upon none of them, only they that were baptized in the name of Master Jesus. And he laid their hands on them and they received the what? Holy Spirit. Sometimes you can lay hands on people that receive. Anybody ever seen me lay hands on somebody and they receive the Holy Spirit? See, look at that. That's a great cloud of witnesses right there. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it don't. So when sometimes it don't, I usually say, get over and repent. That's why I usually say, I say, get on over and repent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul, 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Now, fall off the charity and desire what? Desire spiritual gifts. Desire spiritual gifts. But rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto who? Yah, for no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh what? Yes. Mysteries. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men for edification, exhortation, and what? Comfort. Comfort. But he that speaketh in the unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesied edifieth the assembly. He says in verse 5, I would that ye all spake with tongues. But rather ye prophesied. That doesn't mean when he says, for, that's English translation. For greater is he that prophesied and he that speaketh in tongues. Don't interpret that meaning that you're better. We all are prophesying when we open up our mouth. 
The only speaking words is easy to be understood. In the same language, whatever you speak. He that interpret, uh, except that he may interpret that the church may be edified. In other words, what kind of what kind of good is it going to do you if I start going What good is that? What did I just say? What did I just say? Understanding unfruitful, didn't it? Well, I can do that. No, but you can't do the initial evidence. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except that I speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophecy or by doctrine. Then he goes on to verse 18. This is what Paul said. Yes, I thank my Yah. I speak in tongues more than ye all. So if they try to say he ain't never been there to receive it, that ain't what he said. That ain't what he said. Now, remember, Yahshua said, if you can't believe me for my words, then believe the very works. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna go one more step farther. If you can't believe me for what I'm saying, believe my works. You know where I just said the same thing. <laughs> now I'm going to take it a step farther. If those guys out there on them damn street corners vexing everybody's souls got the Holy Spirit, then tell them to show you the works of the kingdom. Yeah. Uh-oh. I want to see it. If those messianics got, got the so-called Holy Spirit in the Ruach, I want to see the demonstration of the power and the works of the Spirit. I want to see the fruit of the Spirit that backs up what your lifestyle and what you're saying. Now, you can't believe what I'm saying? Believe the works. Believe the fruits. They testify. That's what Yahshua was saying. Y'all hear me out there? Warriors, come out and play. What for, brethren? Cover the prophesied and forbid not to speak with tongues. Somebody right and somebody is wrong. There ain't no in between. Listen. Romans 8 9. But ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of Yah dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ. He is what? None of his. Now you see the reason why we need the Holy Spirit? Look. When you really truly have his Holy Spirit. Look what the prophet Ezekiel said. A new heart. Also will I give you. And a new spirit. Spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. You know, a heart that can, that is pliable. A heart that can be touched. A heart that can have compassion. You follow me? A heart is not so hard that it has hardened itself that it's impenetrable. You understand that? And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my what? Statues. And you shall keep my judgments and what? You ain't got to tell me to put on no TTs. That's going to cause me to keep the commandments. When I already got his Ruach in me now, I got a desire to keep his commandments. You have a desire to keep his commandments. You want to do the things that please Yah. That brings glory to his name. Hallelujah. Why do you think the world hates you so much? Because they hated him. This world belonged to Satan. And so when you have that same Holy Spirit in you that he had in him, now the world will hate you. You remember how the world used to love you? All you got to do is start keeping the commandments. Receive his it's all his, it's over with. New heart, new spirit. Now you see the difference between you and them. You, you've been over there on that side. They ain't never been on this side, but you've been on that side. Y'all hear me? 
If you do not have his Holy Spirit, you will not tell the world to receive it. It won't even be a focal point of the message. But you won't be equipped to go out and evangelize and do his word either. Because the way I see it is, is when you go out, you're supposed to heal the sick, cleanse the leopards, raise the dead, and cast out devils. You know what you're supposed to do? That's what you're supposed to do. And how much is that going on today? How much of that is going on today? This is a message that all miles may be stopped. Yahshua himself even received the spirit. And John bear record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove. And it abode upon him. See the spirit descending on him and remain. The same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So who is Yah? Why would he tell you to do something he ain't did himself? I mean, he even received it. Yah is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. No wonder some of you can't be broken down so much. You ever see some of us, man, it's like a river of life. Huh? Flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Open prison doors and set the captives free. I got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up a well down in my soul. Spring up a well and make me whole. Spring up a well and give to me that life eternally. Them tears begin to well up into my eyes. That well is busting from the inside. Exercising his relief valve. Hallelujah. See, you just don't, you can't only just have truth, brother Myron. You gotta have the spirit. And you can't only just have the spirit, but you also gotta have the truth. So they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Glory to the king. That's a good, quick message. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Play a tune, Brother Allen. A relaxing tune, all right? Y'all want to give some of y'all the Holy Spirit that don't have it. And y'all also would love to heal some of y'all, but you got to ask. You've got to ask. To everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, they find it. Everyone that knocketh is open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Glory. Glory, get on up here, elders. Brother Scott, get on up here. Right up front up there. You need y'all to touch you. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you need to be healed, form a line in the middle right here. The rest of you start in your own way, worship and magnify y'all. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Let us lift up our hands to the king of glory just for a second and give him praise. Clap your hands, O ye gates, and even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Hallelujah. 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 Make your request known. Those of you that are in a line, go to one of these elders, one of these brothers right here, and let them begin to lay hands on you and grant your petition. Hallelujah. Glory to the King.
Our glory to the King. So many people being healed, delivered, filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, we thank the Father for it. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We glorify and magnify your holy name. Hallelujah, there's nothing like you in all the earth. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to your name. Boy, ain't the Father good? Hallelujah. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do so we don't keep people because some people have to get on the road. When we dismiss from here, it right now is 2 o'clock, so let's, let's say 2.30, we'll be at the baptism hall, okay? 2 thirds we'll be down there to baptize, and then after that, we'll go eat, okay? All right, y'all got it, right? 2.30 baptism. Ain't the Father good? Yes, Hallelujah. Lord oh, Jesus is so good. Yahshua, the King of glory. People been delivered. Hallelujah. The power of Yah. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this wonderful feast day that you've given us, visitation, delivering us by the power of your might. We're waiting for the testimonies to come in. What doctors couldn't do, you could and can and will and did do. We'll lift up and magnify your name in the earth, even if, if we're the last basket of testimony. We'll glorify and magnify your magnificent name. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. The truth, your word, holiness, sanctification, the blood, redemption, name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. We continue to keep serving you and wait on you. We can't wait till the kingdom comes. Father, we bless you. And everyone that is getting on the road, heading on the road, Father, we wish them traveling mercies. Watch over them, Father. Minister to them. We lose holy angels to be around about them. And all of us that are here, Father, encourage our hearts, Father. We curse and rebuke this virus. that's trying to go around and hit more saints right now. We got the victory in the blood of Jesus. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we claim this victory for everyone to be healed right now. We curse this and break this curse in Jesus' name. Everyone out there, Father, let them be encouraged to encourage our hearts. We need you more than now. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for visiting your people. In the magnificent name of Yahshua. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. King is coming. Glory, 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 glory.